barbecues. So the floor is yours. And who makes the best asado, the best barbecue? We leave that question for later. Today, I'm going to speak about Container Lab. Has anybody heard about Container Lab? So, what is Container Lab? So, let us start with a bit of history and how we have used simulators or emulators to build laboratory environments for different purposes. Now, first of all, working in this business from a lab is not a privilege, it is a right. And this facilitates things today because having physical labs is very expensive because of reasons of space and cost. So we have virtual labs now. And for those for, for change management, for example, we have to be ready for all the different activities or uh, potential cases that might arise. So this is very useful when I want to do any changes in my network. I prepare this in a lab and then I can implement it. Then these are useful for the purpose of prototyping and validation. So you have an, an IX which I wish to migrate to GPN. I first do all the prototypes in the lab environment so I'm better prepared with all the different options that might occur in terms of perforce. So then I can use this for developing the features and all the rest so I can determine when I can implement in the production environment. Last but not least, learning. Today, it's very popular to use virtual labs for learning and for certifications for all the certifications on the market where uh, uh, there used to be places where you had racks and racks and switches and routers, and now everything is centralized in a single server. And uh, that, uh, with that, you can cater for all. How, so how did we typically run labs? Uh, uh, now, this may sound familiar to you. This is a sketch that many of us know. And there you see that we uh, dragged and dropped all the things that we wanted to use in the, in the ma, uh, in our lab, and we would just click on it, and that was very good, and that was fine. However, we need something to enable us to develop this lab environment a bit more dynamic, a bit more open, a bit more flexible. And that is why container, that is what led to the creation of container labs. That is based on the principle of what's coming of the IT world. With a file, we declare everything we want to, to implement in our lab. In your case, it would be servers, databases, uh, OSs, uh, all of uh, the computing part, and that uh, will uh, the, and uh, the uh, infrastructure as a code, and that will generate our IT environment. And this is what we did with Container Lab. We took that same philosophy, and also with uh, a flat file that's user friendly, and and it's machine uh, uh, friendly. We can use a file that can be easily understood by humans or easy to write by a person. It can be used as a, a tool and we can process it and eventually well, implement it in our lab environment. Let me mention the advantages and disadvantages of each of the options that I gave you. The traditional uh, that uh, are uh, the the, um, the network emulation as we and the container lab that we proposed. One of the advantages of this tool is that it was built with that specific purpose. It was built to create network environments, and that made it ve made them very robust, very sound. And when we work in these markets. 
uh, we, uh, the people expect them to be free of charge. Nobody here is paying for a tool like this, nor do we have the resources to buy a license. So they were expected to be are given free of charge, and that was very convenient. Another advantage could also be a con- constraint. It was that we had, dr- you could drag and drop, click, 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 and that was it. Um, and then the disadvantages. First of all, that they are virtual machines. Now, they can be quite uh, demanding in terms of the use of resources, disk, uh, CPU, etc. So, we need uh, we are now need more and more resources so uh, having to use a, a server already makes it uh, difficult to optimize the resources so things get a bit heavy and not as open other platforms or other vendors wouldn't find it so easy to join transparently to the, this uh, same solution and so it was semi-open. And then the user interface, it that posed many restrictions in terms of what we could do with automation. So what does Container Lab give you? First of all, it's first-class support for a containerized uh, uh, an OSs. Another advantage is that uh, we run on uh, dockers, so everything is done through virtual links, which gives you a very transparent data path, because maybe you've seen that you wanted to run uh, the SP uh, protocols, and then, and that is, uh, you don't have the possibility of doing lags, or um, it's that's a disadvantage. And with the container lab, as it gives you a more transparent data path, you don't have that problem. Another advantage is that it's 100% Git friendly, so you can share it. And it's very, um, you, you can share it, and I can be working, I can put it in my machine, I can share it with you, and we can replicate that solution as many times as we want. That's another big advantage of Container Lab. This also makes it very CI friendly with contents integration. I may have versions of my lab, and uh, those versions will go hand in hand with what happens in my production network. I develop this, and I integrate this in my production network. And it's quite uh, light, quite open, with a small footprint, free and fast, so you can integrate other elements that in the past were very difficult to integrate. So now you can integrate a container for uh, apps like uh, Sixlog, uh, Jeremiah, GFC, and you and monitoring security uh, apps uh, that may run in parallel with the rest. So as to the uh, negative things, first of all, that it's very new. It hasn't been working for very long, and there are not too many OSs that uh, have a network OS supported. And no graphic interface as we can get with the traditional tools. Let's see how Container Lab works. So let's use a lab with a network, as you see here on the screen, where we have four elements. And there you have the cloud that is uh, mimicking the IS. We, the, here we have uh, different network elements. Many of them are propriety. And we have, we have an open BGP element up here on top, BIRD, also uh, BGP. And then we have another node that is um, uh, the peer number one, uh, peer number two to the right. And then you have this Nokia SROS down there. And all of them will do peering using this IP switching network. So basically what we're going to do is to make these two guys 
speak of BGP. How do we do that? Well, the first step is to install Container Lab. The only thing you need is, uh, uh, yes, the, the only requirement is to install Docker. Once you install Docker, you run this command and automatically, whoops, Let's go back and back. Yes, here. Where is Container Lab supported? It's com for Windows, for Linux, and Mac. So if you have Docker with that machine, you can uh, work with Container Lab. OK, then how do we create this specific lab? First of all, we give it a name uh, we, for the file. In this case, it's, I'm going to call it my lab. And then the, we define the topology. We start with the nodes. So let's start with the first node. The first node, in this case, we're going to call it peer one. First, we define what type of, what kind of node here. This is a Nokia SROS, SROS. We define the image. Another good, another advantage is that you can use different images at the same time. So um, even though, uh, so you can do that with Container Lab. And if you need a license, you can declare the license here inside this file. Having done that, automatically, this deploys the one uh, peer one, peer two, and the what I'm uh, deploy implementing here is an image of RR. That's uh, an image that you can install from the internet. Now, if the image is not available in the host, in your PC or your server, whatever, um, um, uh, they will look for it in the internet. This would be the route server one. In this case, it's running on OpenBGP. And finally, the uh, router read of, and uh, it, this is running on Linux. And uh, having deployed the, uh, um, then we have to create the network of the IXP with a layer two in the middle. And we see that, say that the IXP net, here you see it. It, you could call it anything, and then the uh, bridge. And then I'm going to create the links. In the example here, we have declared all the links and all the platforms. Every platform has a different way, and this depends on the vendor, of how to enter in the ports that are exposed to, and how to connect with another device. Here I'm doing a peer one, internet one, this. Uh, IXP net port one and so on with two, etc. Okay, so having created this file uh, topology, I just delete this command. I put container lab deploy and the topology file that I want to create. So once I create this, I get all this. It gives me a summary with uh, uh, all the nodes created and the IP addresses for uh, both IPv4 and IPv6. You don't have to be to worry for the uh, IP. You get them automatically. Not just that, but in the TC host of the machine you're running creates entries, uh, domain for each of those IPs. So if you want to access uh, the, the equipment, you can use the IP address or the name. That's it. The next step, having access to the machines. If uh, you have a router and you have SSH support, you, um, as this is running on Dockers, you can also use native uh, Docker native commands to run the installation. In this case, we do docker exec IT, the name of the domain, and what we want to access with this machine particularly. And we have uh, the line of command of this uh, machine. Let's uh, test it here in this example. 
we SCH, well, in this case, we are we're trying to connect with peer two. This is a sort of video. I don't know whether it's running. Okay. Here at the back. Oh, that's a problem. Well, imagine that you have a console and you can configure it, play with your imagination. In this case, what I wanted to show you with that, unfortunately we can't see it, is that when you enter the machine, it uh, will de you deploy this and it will tell you that there's nothing and that's on purpose because the machine has not been configured. So there's a way that in Container Lab you can use a preloaded configuration and in the topology file you can tell it. Well, for this mode, Nokia, SROS, you'll find the configuration in the host. And when the node uh, starts, it will reestablish the uh, connection. And the same applies to the Linux equipment. And in this case, we are going to do very interesting thing. This is, again, this is Docker, so we are not hiding anything. You can use Docker containers within Container Lab. In this case, we are binding the RR that is in a local file in my host. And the good thing is that when I modify this file, it will also mo modify, change uh, the file here. So I won't have to do it twice. And here, um, there, but there are, there's more. For the nodes, for instance, as BGPD, we also have to give the node as such an address. And in that case, too, and this is something that we are copying of the dockers that uh, we are generating dockers. When we, as soon as you load the container, you run it and you look at to the interface that we have. This should also, there, there, we should also have an animation, but the BGP session is no longer there. So here you pick up the BGP session. This is an example as to how we use container labs to deploy something that is quite simple. We have uh, numerous examples in our website. You can try these out. It's publicly available. And then we have configuration of all the things that you can configure in an IX, uh, uh, ACL filtering, MAC filtering, bump filtering. So this is for the network experts. Now, where you can come work and you contain information on this lab, this lab has been defined in this website. Just scan this QR code and then you will reach the site containing all the information of this uh, lab. Now, these are the supported systems in terms of containerized routers. This is a family we have over here, including Nokia and others. So this is a tool that is very efficient and can be used to try multi-vendor environments. And that is the title of my presentation. Now, to sum up, what did we intend with container labs to take that environment as a, in the form of a declarative form. So this is what I wish to build and container labs isn't takes care of building my lab. And this should be shareable. I want this to be easily deployed by my colleagues and workmates and to do testing in the same environment. This should be open. We have a large number of people who joined the project and are creating many more images and many more options in Container Lab. This should be container-based. This makes it very rapid. The deployment takes place within one minute, and it is light. 
So where can we get all information? First of all, in the official site of Container Labs, you have it over there on the screen. We have a Discord service. This is publicly available. So these are resources that you can access publicly. Anyone can use these. We also have a GitHub containing examples and many resources which you can download and test out in your own labs. And I am here today in case you have any questions. And if you wish to know who does the best barbecue, I will be glad to be there. Thank you. Well, for sure, those who wish to ask any questions, there is an incentive for that. I am Douglas. Great presentation. I imagine this based on concepts that are included in programming and code development or test design driving for the network. If you wish to deploy a major change in the network, how will this be? behave. So if I do all this in the lab, and we can see how it will perform. Now, my question is regarding the need. For example, Wireshark is the path forward. It's how at Container Lab can you capture packets and communications between the two? Do you have any solution for that? Well, that's a great question. I forgot to mention that during my presentation. When managing all this in containers, obviously all the links between containers that are exposed, well, firstly, the networking part of the container is a namespace. It's Linux namespace you're running in the container. So all these virtual links are interfaces of this namespace. So if I wish to capture this in Wireshark, I just do the query to DNS space for that virtual space and namespace, and I capture this in Wireshark, both locally, name server, and I do a pickup fly, or in Wireshark if I have a connector where I'm running Wireshark. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Ariel. More than a question, I want to express my thanks. As veterans of these events and trying to organize labs in events such as these, we have failed in 1,001 possible times. We have learned 1,001 ways of how not to do a lab. And we have a success story at LACNOC in recent, in the last event. We organized a VXLAN lab where we put about 150 routers live with a platform of container labs with less than 8 giga RAMs, and it worked like a charm. It worked perfectly well, so I invite all the community to test this out. It has YAML, which might be a bit difficult initially, but I invite you to use it because it is great. It's a great project, so thank you once again for giving us this tool. Thank you. And by the way, I am at your disposal if you need any help at LACNOG. In fact, I've been working with Nanog's team in North America, and Container Labs is the official tool for all the Nanox Hackathon Lab. Thank you. Carlos, I would like to join in, in the thanks. This is a wonderful project you have. We were pleased with Jorge when we saw a presentation by Container Labs and almost told Jorge, accept it. We then check it, just accept it by all means. This is an outstanding project. Initially, when I started with Container Labs, I had the same doubts as Douglas, but I figured out how to solve this. And the thing that came up, I don't know if this is possible or an improvement. You can take a link and you can introduce a, cup, a sort of degradation or a delay or discarding packets. That used to, in Linux, there used to be some tools, but I don't know if these can be applied here. Well, that's a good observation. It's a good point. Yes, we do have tools to generate traffic. It's a valid question, of course. And I can check with the people in charge of developing this because I'm the messenger of Container Labs. 
but have great communication with the guys who who write code. But if we do have something, I'll let you know. Thank you. Good afternoon. First of all, amazing project, um, awesome. I found this very, very interesting. And I have two questions. The first question is, what hardware do I need for advanced labs? Because I see that you have Cisco's and ESM and so others. And we do this with EBG, with another platform. The hardware is what? This has to be very strong hardware to support with, with two or three factors. It almost uh, crashes it. And then I didn't hear about Huawei. I didn't see Huawei as one that is supported. Any issues or are you going to support this in the future? Well, let me start with the last question. The first one was regarding the resources required to run a lab, and the second is why is Huawei not there? This is an open environment, as I mentioned before. So we're not denying entrance to anyone to the Container Labs project. If they wish to do to join, they have to do so. They, they're welcome. They have to take, make the initiative. And is licensing required? Well, for some devices, let me give you an example. I have an example from Nokia. We have licensed teams, for example, the SRS-based devices, but we have licenses for assessment purposes that we can distribute freely if this is for academic purposes and so on. Then some of our platforms have already migrated to non-licensed systems, and this makes things more versatile. You can use labs such as Linux and do this within minutes, and the rest are available in the internet. Now, the issue of licenses is because many vendors have the tradition of having licenses to restrict use and virtual code is often the same code used in the real life devices. So many vendors apply these restrictions for protection purposes. In our case, we are evolving to make everything open and license free. Thank you. Good afternoon, first of all. I would like to thank you for your outstanding presentation. From the standpoint of software development, this is very interesting. And my question has three levels. The most simple one has to do with the following. NVIDIA, what does it exactly support? First part of the question. Then, at the level of the tools that you have in your system, this can be used to create working environments to organize hackathons, potentially to organize a scenario for a hackathon. Yes, in fact, as I already mentioned, at the our internal hackathon is the event we organize at Nokia, and this is a tool we use, of course, but also at Nanog, they have the equivalent of this that we're organizing here, but this is for North America, and Container Labs is the official tool at Nanog to organize a hackathon. The other thing is to have your email to ask you for help to organize a hackathon. Thank you. And regarding your first question about NVIDIA, they also have an image to do switching, and it runs inside Container Lab. Hello. Eduardo, I have a question regarding Palo Alto. I see that you, I saw this on one of the slides when you use the labs for security purposes or if all the commands are supported. If I wish to implement this for a production level or for a previous presentation to a client that has a lot of clusters in the cloud also, Oh, nice. Or could there be a limitation to a certain extent because this is a virtual machine? Well, the first limitation that these environments have, the lab environments have, is performance, the number of packets per second and the flow that we can pass through the labs is the one that we can run through the real equipment. Now, regarding Palo Alto, to be frank, I'm not aware uh, this this is an open project, and each vendor provides the containerized images to use in Docker. 
And these images in general terms have to do with the functionalities to be as similar as possible to the OS that you have in the real box. I think that in terms of functionalities, there are no limitations, but yes, in terms of performance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And thank you for your questions. Good afternoon. I would like to ask a question. Yes, brief. You have to be very, very brief. So what I would like to know is whether there is a possibility of exporting this for future documentation. If this laboratory is created, you have all the infrastructure, and then can you somehow export that laboratory to apply in production or to take advantage of the generated code already with the application in production? So what I understood from your question is that what you do in container labs, if this can be exported to other environments that are in production, is that so? Because I wasn't wearing the headset, he explains. Yes, if the product you are emulating is exactly the same to the physical mapping of what you have in the device as such, then the transfer is totally transparent. There's no problem at all. So thank you and congratulations. Goodbye. So thank you very much. We'll now have a